Well, that's from the United States. And over in West Asia, though, an explosion at a building in Tel Aviv has left one person dead and two injured. Yemen's Houthis have claimed responsibility for the attack. Earlier, the Israeli army said that initial inquiry indicates that the incident was caused by the falling of a quote-unquote aerial target. About the military operation that targeted Tel Aviv, the spokesperson for Yemen's Houthis revealed on X that the militant group has claimed targeting the Jaffa region with a new drone called Yaffa. The drone force at the Yemeni Houthi armed forces with Allah's help carried out a qualitative military operation that targeted one of the important targets in the occupied Jaffa area called as Tel Aviv by the Israelis. The operation was carried out using a new drone aircraft named Jaffa capable of bypassing the enemy's air defense systems and undetectable by radars. The operation successfully achieved its objectives. The Israeli media said fragments from the drone of a kind widely used by Iranian-backed militia groups in the region had been recovered nearby. The drone flew from either Sanaa, Hodeida or Thais. The distance covered by this new drone, Yaffa, as mentioned by the Yuhuti roof spokesperson, would be around 2,500 kilometers. Meanwhile, Israel has identified its military offensive in central Gaza. In the latest, at least 54 Palestinians have been killed in central Gaza. According to the Hamas-run health ministry, the death toll has crossed 38,000. The Israeli military has also claimed killing the commander of a Hamas allied group in Lebanon's eastern Bekaa Valley. Israel said that it carried out two strikes which killed the Radwan Force Operations Unit commander Ali Jafar Matuk. In a statement, the IDF said that he was responsible for carrying out terror attacks and missile launches against Israel. The airstrike on Lebanon also killed another operations officer in the same Radwan unit, along with several more Hezbollah operatives. Now, on the diplomatic front, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Hamas will only compromise under pressure and that they are making systemic progress in achieving war goals, freeing hostages and eliminating Hamas militants. We are making systemic progress in achieving the war goals, freeing hostages, eliminating Hamas and ensuring Gaza will not be able to pose another threat to Israel. We are achieving these goals thanks to combining military pressure and political pressure. And I can tell you unambiguously that Hamas is indeed under pressure. Netanyahu also made a surprise visit to the troops in southern Gaza and demanded that Israel should remain in control of the Philadelphia Corridor and the Rafah border crossing in order to prevent weapons smuggling to Hamas across the Egyptian border. I gained strength here from their great achievements. I got stronger in my understanding that their powerful action above and below ground is essential for Israel's security and stronger in the understanding that our control of the Philadelphia corridor and of the Rafah crossing are essential going forward. Now the Israeli negotiating team has said that all these demands are essential for the ongoing ceasefire talks. According to reports, the Mossad chief David Banya will not resume talks in Qatar until the new formulas proposed by Netanyahu are implemented. This comes just few days before the Prime Minister will be delivering his fourth address at a joint session of Congress when he visits Washington, D.C. next week. He's also slated to meet the U.S. President Joe Biden, but it all depends on Biden's recovery from COVID-19. More on this developing story, our correspondent Jody Cohen has sent us this report from the ground zero. So I'm in Tel Aviv at the site of the Houthi drone attack that hit the economic capital of Israel. Behind me, you can see apartment buildings, there's a hotel, there's a supermarket, there are cars that have been hit. And if I just turn around here, that building there is the American consulate in Tel Aviv. So it remains to be seen how Israel or America might potentially respond to this latest attack by the Houthis. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.